a very very veteran surgeon who is specially known for his trauma but he's amongst the pioneers of pediatric orthopedics in ahmedabad and uh, practically well versed with almost every aspect of it so primal over to you yeah thank you rujuta uh, uh, i'm going to bring you back to trauma our bread and butter and uh, the area of discussion will be arthrogram of elbow and hip joint um the first we'll start with elbow and before we start uh, i would like you to uh, raise a question and the question which came to my mind was that why do we need an arthrogram and this particular case will elaborate you why do you need this technique to be learned so this two year male was operated by an orthopedic surgeon uh, who received this patient fresh within couple of hours of injury a beautiful close reduction and pinning was done but unfortunately unfortunately when the wires were removed the child had a significant cubitis var as you see in this x ray so what went wrong basically what happened in this case was the surgeon could not delineate the distal fragment he could not visualize it properly so he placed all the wires in the proximal fragments without any wire in the distal fragment which slipped into varus and lead to cubitus varus so now the question arises how this can be prevented so let's look at an another case three month old female came to me she had a previous trauma in the same limb and this is how with this x ray she came to me with the traction films the fracture was not properly visible the distal fragment which was absolutely cartilaginous cartilaginous was also not very visible so what i did was i put a small amount of dye so that the distal fragment was very well visible now so with the visibility of the improved visibility of the distal fragment this fracture was just reduced like a supracondylar of fracture one can see the reduction here in ap as well as lateral view and it was simply fixed by two lateral k wires and repeat arthrogram showed nice articular congruity and a good reduction like a simple supracondylar fracture and that is how there was a good union without any deformity again this child male 5 year old had a significantly tilted radial neck but we i could not see radial uh, head properly another even under anesthesia examination i could not uh, exactly see where the radial head was and how much angulated it was the moment you put a small amount of dye one can see that there is a significant angulation of the radial head which is looking way away from the radial shaft with joystick reduction the radial neck was pushed back and there was an excellent alignment which was which was stable throughout the range of movement i did not fix it but could get good uh, per operative and post operative range of movements so for those who do not know how to do this procedure as taral already mentioned there are three ways of approaching elbow joint one is from the lateral side another is from the uh, posterior lateral side and the third is from the posterior side the most important thing uh, what our colleagues generally don't know what dye to be used is a contrast agent it is basically a low osmolar dye non ionic non meric contrast medium which is either iopamidol or iohexol uh, the commonly available trade name is omnipack um those is not provided by the manufacturer but in generally pediatric patient you might dilute the omnipack there are certain iohexol dye which are coming in lesser amount of dilutions the uh, more amount of dilutions where you can use increased quantity but you should not use more than 2 mg per kg body weight but generally about a millimeter or 2 ml of dye would not exceed this dose what you need is an 18 gauge needle approaches i have already discussed let's look at a clinical example this 3 and 1/2 year old male sustained trauma while playing this is the time in which i was not aware of internal oblique x rays so what i did is i put the child under anesthesia and uh, this is how uh, i would mark my bony points this is the olecranon this is the radial head and this is the distal humerus if you palpate there is a, always a soft spot just lateral to the olecranon process you can put a needle through that soft spot in a trauma case once you put the needle and if you are in the joint you will have hematoma evacuated if this is a fresh case and it will be mixed with uh, joint fluid so that that hematoma will not be exactly like blood but it will be thin blood once you have that if you want to reconfirm you can uh, inject a small amount of dye so that you are sure that you are in the joint it may not be necessary if you get a nice hematoma evacuation as seen earlier in the video 
and then you can inject and during the injection you should watch live so that the exit of the dye will tell you where the fracture line is and whether there is a capsular tear or not. So if you look at this, this is the significantly displaced fragment of uh, lateral condyle which was looking seemingly undisplaced as uh, Taral mentioned what he calls a sulta and this required open reduction and internal fixation and had an eventful uh, recovery. Arthrography can be used in decision making in pediatric elbow as well. Uh, classifying lateral condyle before the advent of internal oblique view and if you are not sure if you have this type of fracture you can do an arthrogram. Your arthrogram shows that there is an extension of the fracture all the way to the joint and this should be secured and stabilized with, it, with divergent uh, KYs percutaneously. It can be useful in neglected injuries. This child presented to me with stiff elbow. This was an injury in rural India, could not come to me in time and that was the x-ray at the presentation. When I took a proper good quality x-ray and the true lateral view, it appeared that this was a neglected uh, elbow dislocation. Somehow the things were not fitting uh, well uh, with my clinical examination, so I decided to take that child and put him, uh, add some dye here. So when I did a dynamic assessment, I found that the elbow joint was very well located, but there was a uh, anterior uh, fracture with anterior dislocation of the shaft. So basically, if this in radiological picture, that was the humerus and this was the anterior bone. So this is basically a physal separation, which was missed and <clears throat> malunited and the anterior bony shaft was probably um, jutting out and preventing the flexion. The child was advised to wait for remodeling and then uh, take up uh, for the surgery. So a small amount of dye if kept handy while treating the elbow injury can prevent multiple, uh, can lessen the amount of surgical volume and sometimes allow you to make a clear decision without uh, disturbing the sanctity of the elbow joint. You need to learn uh, um, uh, how to do these things because uh, some, this was a friend who sent me um, a case from uh, his OT. Uh, this two-year female had this type of injury and this MRI uh, was there. Um, I'm sure you can hardly make out what type of injury is till you look at all the films. In this lateral film, you can easily see that this is a physal separation. But if you know how to read an elbow x-ray, you will be able to read this x-ray preoperatively and will not even need an MRI. So what happened was this child uh, had an arthrogram, but the dye was so much, so much dye was used which there was so much of an extra position that distal fragment uh, clarity was not there. So this uh, gentleman had a difficult time while reducing and fixing this. And that is the simple example I wanted you to see that if you, if you start doing this uh, arthrogram in relatively simpler cases, you will get the hang of the uh, technique and when you really need that, you will have mastered that technique. That is how we did it. So basically elbow arthrography, I would say, is must for all the orthopods who treat children with elbow injuries, especially if you are treating really young children, less than two and three years old. This is a great handy tool which helps in, uh, in making your decisions with clarity. It avoids unnecessary surgery and exploration, decreases complications, and I have found that few ml of dye solves many complex problems. Moving from elbow to hip, I would, uh, I would classify the use of dye in a cold as well as traumatic cases of the hip joint. As always, we'll start with trauma. This two-year-old male fell from a second floor and presented to me with this two type uh, two x-rays of the entire limb. The problem uh, this child had, he had a normal CT brain, but he could not move right lower limb. And this was his uh, Scott film on the pelvis. And when uh, uh, I saw the child and when I did a lateral x-ray, it was very obvious that there was a capital femoral epiphysis separation or type 1 del B injury to the proximal femur. So the, the treatment is basically very simple. You take the child under anesthesia and then you fix, stabilize the physis. The best way to stabilize physis is to use smooth KYs. So I put uh, three smooth KYs and to confirm that there is no joint penetration by the KY to prevent any type of chondrolysis, it's best that you do an arthrogram and confirm uh, that uh, your all the wires are within the limits of capital femoral epiphysis without any migration inside the joint. 
This is the one month and two year follow up uh, radiograph of the same child and an excellent clinical result. The same thing is there for uh, Skiffy. Um, in this lockdown, as Tarul mentioned, that the, there is a difference in the way we see uh, the injury pattern. We are seeing a lot of neglected cases. And what I'm seeing is a lot of kids who remain homebound have put on a lot of weight. Uh, they are deficient in vitamin D and there is a significant increase uh, in the ratio of slip capital femoral FFCs, which I see currently in my practice. So this um, child had uh, uh, skiffy pinning a few days earlier. And uh, when I put the child through the range of movement, I found that there was a significant uh, uh, less distance between the screw and the margin of the hip joint in these two particular views. So to confirm whether there's any penetration or not, I did an arthrogram. And after arthrogram, after doing a dynamic assessment, it was obvious that the screw was significantly away from the articular margin. It had not caused anything. And this, chance, this uh, patient has a very less chance of developing hydrogenic chondrolysis. Let's move on to non-traumatic conditions in the pediatric hip where the arthrogram will help you in making a diagnosis and make the life easy for an orthopedic surgeon. This 11-month-old female uh, presented to me with diagnosis of DDH, mother noticed shortening and the x-ray was done. And this is how uh, she had missed the bus of uh, significantly less severe treatment and ended up uh, to an orthopedic surgeon for an invasive procedure. So this child uh, was reduced like this, and there was a very nice uh, uh, cone of safety, which is called a safe zone or safe cone of Ramsey. Uh, and uh, we decided that, that uh, we'll uh, try and do conservative treatment. Before you try and do conservative treatment, you would like to be sure that there you have achieved a concentrate reduction. So the best thing to do is to do an arthrogram. There is a medial approach to do hip arthrogram in, in, in infants. You take an entry just below adductor, long, uh, adductor longus tendon, direct it slightly laterally. You hit the femoral knee and you are generally in the joint. And then you can uh, inject the knee uh, dye with uh, live uh, fluoroscopy on so that you know that you are in the joint. Similar to elbow, you can use a small amount of air to confirm that you are within the joint or not. What is most important in hip arthrogram, again, like elbow, is how you interpret it. Uh, basically, if you look at this um, uh, arthrogram, you can see that this is the capital femoral epiphysis, which is very well delineated. This is the femoral neck with significantly increased antiversion. This is the femoral, um, uh, the hip joint capsule with ligamentum teres. And this is basically the part of the labrum, which is uh, there between the head and the estabular margin. And once you reduce it, you can see very well that uh, there is no dye pulling here. And this thing, which we call known as the labrum, is completely out and it is not obstructing the reduction. And there is no medial dye pulling, which suggests that there is an excellent uh, uh, congruity of the hip joint. And this uh, hip joint is likely to remain stable and give excellent clinical result. Post-reduction CT shows a good confirmation of uh, our uh, good reduction. And this is a one-year follow-up with excellent clinical results and uh, radiological results. Uh, you are not always uh, successful with uh, your close reduction and you need to know where you will not be. So this girl with bilateral DDH with one side uh, dislocation and one side dysplasia uh, was uh, referred to me. Under anesthesia, uh, I uh, did an arthrogram so in arthrogram, I found that there was a significant um, tissue, that is this labrum was posed between the head uh, and the reduction. So when I reduced this, I found that the labrum was actually coming between the head as well as uh, the estabular flow. So if you interpret this arthrogram, it very well shows you that that is the labrum which is infolded and it is not allowing the femoral head to take gain access into the floor of the estabulum through the estabular cavity. And there is a significant medial dye pulling, which suggests that this reduction is not concentric, even though the femoral head appears opposite the estabulum. So I went ahead, uh, did clearance of uh, the inverted limbers uh, from the medial anteromedial approach. Uh, now the femoral head is uh, sitting very well against the estabulum. This is the labrum which was inver inverted, which was uh, slightly incised and inverted. 
And this is the size of the incision you can generally get away with if you're using anteromedial approach and uh, child hit back. <clears throat> In very complicated conditions like uh, uh, complications of femoral neck fracture. This 14 year old female fell at home and had fracture of neck femur. She was advised by an orthopedic surgeon for stabilization. So they could find out one orthopedic surgeon who advised that uh, this can be treated uh, with traction. So child was put on traction at home and when she resumed, resumed movement, there was a significant restriction of movement. So a couple of months down the line, child had this radiological picture. There was the, uh, this was the amount of the movement she had when she presented to me. And uh, when I did an arthrogram and did a static evaluation, I could realize that uh, something wrong is happening. The beauty of arthrography is to allow an uh, uh, dynamic assessment. So when I did an dynamic assessment, I found that there was a hinged abduction, which you can beautifully see uh, in this uh, radiological picture. And there was a mushrooming of the head, which you can see by rotation of the femoral head. So uh, this child uh, was um, then treated. Uh, this is after draining the extra dye. One can delineate the femoral head very well. And one can see that um, the head is impinging against, uh, the, the furrow in the head is impinging against the lateral margin of the vestibular. So she was treated with broomstick POP with medial uh, tenotomy. Uh, she initially did well, but unfortunately she slipped back. She was advised uh, some further procedures, but uh, she could, did not follow. Another case, 10 year male uh, who presented uh, two years down the line with a diagnosis of Perthes hip. Uh, again had restriction of abduction and even without arthrography had a hinged abduction, very obvious on dynamic assessment. So if this child uh, had undergone arthrogram uh, to see in which position the head comes out and uh, there is a nice congruity. So if you look at this video, in adduction you will find that there is no medial dial pulling. In adduction there is no medial dial pulling, in abduction there is a medial dial pulling. So if you adduct the proximal femur, it articulates much better uh, with estabulum. So this child was then operated uh, with uh, adduction osteotomy of, that means the valgus osteotomy of the proximal femur. And this is his clinical result at one year follow. Uh, I was supposed to take another topic, uh, but due to lack of- No, I think, yeah. Uh, this- um, uh, Only two minutes left, so. Yeah. So, Hopefully, if they'll mange more, then uh, we'll do one more of these programs. So, so this is I, I have this on my YouTube channel. One can watch that, and I would like to thank you with this uh, word, this simple word that the world changes when we change our own perspective. Thank you, Rujuta, and thank you.